Okay, this is a joint research with Dr. Sam and Dr. Faragara Sigara. Okay. I'm a Fuminori Toyosaki. Okay. Our research addresses how we can incentivize at-risk capacity building for vaccines. Okay, okay so what is at-risk capacity building for vaccine production? Traditionally, vaccine development takes more than 10 years. In contrast, Vaccines against COVID-19 were expected to complete the whole process within 18 months. So, many vaccine producers were expected to scale up their production capacity before COVID-19 vaccine was successfully developed. Okay. Of course, okay, the vaccine producers were afraid of investment loss caused by the unsuccessful vaccine development. Okay. So this type of vaccine production capacity building is called the at-risk capacity building. Yeah. At-risk capacity building is very crucial to end the pandemic sooner via rapid rollout vaccination. However, yeah, as this newspaper article indicates, yeah, rapid rollout was unsuccessful due to the shortage of at-risk capacity. Yeah. So our research objective is to answer how can we incentivize at-risk capacity building for vaccines for future pandemics? Okay, to this end, we classified vaccine production mode in two types. First, integrated mode. Okay. Before COVID-19 pandemic, okay, in-house vaccine production was common. However, okay, during the pandemic, to meet the enormous and urgent demand for vaccines, okay, many vaccine developers outsourced their production mode. We name it the outsourcing mode. Okay. So we compare the performance of these uh, vaccine production modes in ramping up at risk capacity building. Okay. Specifically, we tackle the following three operational challenges associated with at risk capacity building for vaccines. Okay. First operational challenge is misalignment of interest between the vaccine developers and manufacturers. Which production mode is better in feeding the vaccine demand? Okay. Second operational challenge is information asymmetry between the two parties. Okay. The vaccine developer may selectively send the rosy information about their competence to incentivize manufacturers okay, uh, at risk capacity building. Okay. So, uh, our research question is, can a developer already send a credible signal to a manufacturer? Third one is role of buyers. How should a vaccine buyer, usually government, leverage financial support to incentivize at risk capacity building? Okay. For each of them, we propose effective measures. Okay, so our research successfully derived three key managerial implications. Okay. First, uh, our research revealed outsourcing mode outperformed the integral mode only under limited circumstances. So, okay, providing a financial support to the manufacturer from the developer or vaccine buyers is very important to incentivize at-risk capacity building. Okay. Secondly, okay, vaccine buyers shouldn't bargain down when they purchase vaccines. Okay. Thirdly, okay, our research revealed that vaccine developers cannot always send the credible signals to the manufacturer. So, vaccine developers should establish some kind of a information sharing mechanism okay, that informed the developers through competence level okay, to the manufacturers. Okay. Although our research strongly motivated by the COVID pandemic, our research uh, management implications can be generalized to the product that must be developed and produced in a compressed timeline or require large at-risk capacity building. Okay, so for more detailed information about this research, please visit this open access link. Okay. Our research project is supported by the following two uh, CIHL grants. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention.